Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth, interactive study of the Word of God. I'm excited today because we're beginning a brand new series, Present Truth in Deuteronomy, one of the five books of the Pentateuch, anointed by the Holy Spirit. The prophet Moses has some words for us that will be life-changing for our lives today. So I'm glad you joined us for this new series. Welcome to Hope Sabbath School and welcome to our team. Yeah. <laughs> right here, we've got a team in the studio and we've also got some joining us remotely, remote team members. So I want to welcome Glennie. Good to see you, Glennie from Virginia. Oh, oh, sorry, Florida, that's right. Shana joining us from Maine. Hi, Shana. And Addison joining us from British Columbia, Canada. Hi, Addison, good to see you. And uh, you know, we're getting feedback that people love to get the team expanding with our remote team participants. So we're glad you're with us and we're glad to each one of you for joining us for Hope Sabbath School today. We're always happy to hear from you. You know, someone said you said we're in over 200 countries and there's only like 193 uh, officially recognized. But you know, there are other countries besides the recognized ones. Some say about 215. But our app tells us we're in over 200 countries. Somebody ought to say, Amen. Amen. That's awesome, isn't it, right? And here's a note from Fila in Namibia. Fila, maybe you're watching today. Thanks for writing to us. She says, Hello, Hope Sabbath School team. Hello. 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 I'm Fila from Namibia. I've been watching Hope Sabbath School since March this year. Do you notice we're constantly getting new people becoming part of our Hope Sabbath School family? I just realized that the Hope Sabbath School team really studies the Bible. <laughs> we praise God for that. And may our Lord richly bless you for the work you're doing. I can't stop watching Hope Sabbath School. I watch it every week to help me in my understanding of the Bible. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Fila, thanks for writing to us from Namibia. That's just so exciting to hear from you. Vivian writes from California in the United States of America. She says, I live in California's Bay Area. That's around San Francisco, San Francisco right? I've been watching Hope Sabbath School for about three years now, and I enjoy it immensely. I wanted to share something I've not heard anyone else say about the people on your program. You go, uh-oh. <laughs> They're absolutely beautiful. Their faces, the faces I watch reading the Bible and sharing ideas, reflect a beauty that has to be a reflection of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, praise God. <laughs> That's what we talk about with the miracle, right? What a mighty God we serve. Well, Vivian, thank you. We're reminded, as the prophet said, um, man looks on the outside. God does look at the heart. And our prayer on Hope Sabbath School, and for each one of you, is that the Spirit of Jesus shines through us to bring honor to our Father in heaven. Well, here's a regular note. We get these every once in a while. And this note is from a donor in Michigan in the United States of America. Anybody from Michigan? Oh, Brittany, you're from Michigan. Well, you can give a wave to our anonymous donor. Okay. Thank you, the donor writes. By the way, you know we don't read their names because we're not trying to promote people, but honor God. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your faithfulness and dedication in the study of the Word of God. I've been a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church for many years, but I've always shied away from teaching the Bible lesson. Thanks to your Hope Sabbath School outline, I've now been teaching a Sabbath School class for over a year. Wow. wow. Isn't that awesome? Praise God. Yeah. It's very nice to see all the young men and women who are participating on the panel. May you all continue to be an inspiration to other people. God bless you all. In close, find a small donation and a gift of $250 to help the global ministry of Hope Channel. Well, I want to thank you, donor from Michigan. I want to thank each one of you that partners with us. You can just go to hopetv.org slash donate, or you can go to our Hope Sabbath School page. Thanks for being part of this great miracle. Isn't that exciting, though, that this person's using the outline and started teaching a Bible class? Maximiano writes to us. That, that's actually a Zimbabwean name, Sumiso but now living in Australia. We're a global community, right? Maximiano writes and says, it's amazing how small things matter. 
how a little time you guys put in changes someone's life. Wow. Well, we might pause and say, it's not a little time. We actually put in quite a bit of times. But you understand what the person's saying. Yeah. It changes someone's life. Wow. You're sowing hope in a number of people more than you can imagine. And the beauty of it is you're all letting God's purpose be realized in you and through you. Well, Maximiano, thanks for writing from Australia. He continues, there are a lot of people who need the truth and many of us are not doing the best we should. I just want to say thank you for being amazing, letting God work through you. I hope one day I will join you for one of your Hope Sabbath schools. Well, Maximiano, you can start a Hope Sabbath school team in your area. Download the outline just like the donor from Michigan, and you could start a class there. But thank you for your encouraging words to us. One last note from Joel in Belgium. And Joel writes and says, Hello, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Hello. <laughs> Got a wave. Hope Sabbath school is such a blessing to me. Oh, as a teacher in our local church, I find so much inspiration to share in my lessons. Please keep on providing us with understanding and learning because we never know when the coming of Jesus will take place. Mm. Joel, thanks for writing us to, from Belgium. Isn't it amazing to hear from all around the world? And we'd love to hear from you. You can write to us at sshope at hopetv.org. That's sshope at hopetv.org. And if you go to our website, uh, leave a message for us. We'd love to hear from you. We're glad you're part of our family. Right now, we need your help as we sing our theme song for this new series, Present Truth in Deuteronomy, is taken from Deuteronomy 31.6, word for word. Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, He is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Let's sing it together. Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, He is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake. Fear nor be afraid of them, for the Lord your God, He is the one who goes with you. He will not, will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage, do not fear nor be afraid of them, for the Lord your God, He is the one who Let's pray together. Father in heaven, thank you for that beautiful promise that you will not leave us or forsake us. And as we begin this series of studies, Present Truth in Deuteronomy, we believe the same Holy Spirit who inspired the prophet Moses to write, the same Holy Spirit who preserved the scriptures through the generations, the same Holy Spirit will lead us into truth today. And for that, we just want to say thank you, not just for those of us here in the studio or joining on remotely as team members, but for our Hope Sabbath School members, everyone watching this program today. We pray the Holy Spirit's guidance and blessing in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, I have a confession to make. When I first saw we were going to do a series on Deuteronomy, I thought, Deuteronomy? Can any good thing come out of Deuteronomy? But actually, it's a very exciting book of the Bible, mm -hmm. one of the five books of the Pentateuch mm -hmm. and inspired by the Holy Spirit. I think it's got some amazing lessons for us today. So we're laying a foundation uh, in this first study, Introduction to Deuteronomy. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 1, and we'll read carefully. And Brittany, if you'd start our study, read the first three verses and let's listen carefully to what the prophet Moses is telling us. It gives us a lot of information in those first three verses. 
And I'll be reading from the New King James Version, Deuteronomy chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. These are the words which Moses spoke to all Israel on this side of the Jordan in the wilderness, in the plain opposite Suf, between Paran, Tophel, Laban, Hezeroth, and Dezahabad. It is 11 days journey from Horeb by way of Mount Seir to Kadesh Barnea. Now it came to pass in the 40th year, in the 11th month, on the first day of the month, that Moses spoke to the children of Israel according to all that the Lord had given him as commandments to them. Now there's a lot of information in those first few verses. What jumped out at you immediately? Sabina? I think that for me it jumps out the location okay. where they are. Which the, they're, they're on the border of exactly, the promised land. On the border of promised land. And it happened to be a place that they had been before too. <laughs> it's not a place that they had not been around. So Only 11 days from Kadesh Barnea, yeah. that's where they had turned away from entering exactly, in yeah. and wandered for another how many years? 40, 40 years. 40 altogether, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And now they're back in the same place, all right? What else did you see, Stephanie? It was the 40 years that... Okay, got, that's caught yeah, your attention. That caught my attention. Yeah. So Moses is now 120 years old because he began leading them at age 80. Mm -hmm. He had gone to Midian at age 40. You know the whole story of Moses. Brittany? I was just going to say what jumped out at me is he was speaking the commandments that the Lord had given to him. So he's telling a word from the Lord to the people. And we'll discover in his own testimony a little later that, that he is speaking as a prophet here, not just kind of a few thoughts from an individual. Good point. Anything else? Yes, Samisa. I think it's so specific that you know that this is not just a fable. It can be verified mm. historically. Uh, it's specific to the time, mm -hmm. to the geographic location, right. and a lot of other locations are listed and people, so it's, mm -hmm. it's a factual account mm. which can be validated. That's a really good point. I was, yeah. We were all kind of encouraged Brittany, she was reading through all those strange names, you know, yeah, but it was right. very specific, the location, mm -hmm. the yeah. time, mm -hmm. uh, relation to other places. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so thank you for pointing that out. Well, let's, let's go to the title of the book itself. In, in my Bible, it says the fifth book of Moses called Deuteronomy. But actually, that was not the original title, right, Harold? Correct. What was the original title of this fifth book of the Pentateuch? Devarim, the words. The words. Yes. That, that's actually the first words. The first isn't yes. words in the book. The words of Moses, okay? Uh, so we could just call it the words, but mm -hmm. from what we've learned, we would have to call it the words of God, right. all right, or the inspired words yes. of the prophet, yes. Yes. right? Not just some words, but the inspired words of Moses, all right? Context, when they're about to finish their journey and enter the promised land, all right? Yeah. So does anybody know how it then ended up with a different title? Uh, Sabina, it's, it's not called the words in, in yeah. my in my mm -hmm. Bible. Yeah, I understand, Pastor Derek. That's when they made one of the first translations to the Greek language, the Septuagint, and that's even the version that likely Jesus had access to back in the day. And in Greek, dilt it comes from second, so and then nomos from law. So I understand it. They were trying to refer to the fact that. This was God, again, bringing to the heart of Moses the law in a, an important moment, so second law or law again. Or I, I had read, thank you yeah. for that explanation, I had read mm -hmm. that the Jews would also call the words the repetition mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. of the law. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so it's not the second law like uh, another law. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, it's actually Moses repeating, repeating, it. repeating yeah. yep. like yeah. don't forget Refreshing to mm -hmm. what the Lord has revealed to you. Mm -hmm. Well, this is not the first time the Holy Spirit has spoken through Moses. Mm -hmm. So I would like to put this book of Deuteronomy in its context, which is the Pentateuch, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. The Pentateuch. So what is the first book of the Pentateuch? Genesis. Genesis. Genesis, right, which is the beginnings. Mm -hmm. So what is the book of Genesis all about? Well, mm -hmm. Stephanie, if you could read the first verse of the Pentateuch, which is Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1, I think we'll see at least the first part of what Genesis is about. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. 
In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So there's our starting point for the Pentateuch, which is, what's the starting point? Creation. Creation. That God is our creator. Yeah. Yeah. And to get yeah. even more specific, Harold, if you could read the same chapter, mm -hmm. verses 26 and 27, God is not only the creator. What does it say in verses 26 and 27 of Genesis 1? Yes, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And it reads, Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So we learned in the book of Genesis by the prophet Moses under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, God is not only the creator, but God is our creator, our creator yeah. right? And then down to chapter two, Sabina, if you could mm -hmm. read one through three. I had a Hope Sabbath School member send me an email. He said, I've just started reading the Bible. and mm -hmm. And I keep hearing the Sabbath, the Sabbath, the Sabbath, the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. He said, I didn't know about the Sabbath. Of course, mm -hmm. we're Hope Sabbath, Sabbath School. school. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a little evidence of Sabbath truth. But let's read what Genesis 2 verses 1 to 3 records. Okay, I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And it says, Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished, and on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it, he rested from all his work, which God had created and made. Mm -hmm. All right, so I've got a question from one of our remote team members here. Addison, if you could help me out with this question. Someone might say, wait a minute. Moses was not around at creation. Mm -hmm. True or false? True. 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 Um, so maybe he just borrowed some other ancient Near East text. You know, there were other texts that tried to explain the beginning of life. Um, uh, so Addison, help us out. By Moses' own confession, how does he know about these things that happened long before his birth? A worthy question. And I think, Derek, to what you mentioned uh, at the beginning of our study while we were in prayer and... Uh, saying that the Holy Spirit uh, was to be our guide. He is the one who has inspired the word. And so it's the same. It's, it's true for the book of Genesis. It's true for its author, which likely was Moses. And here God uh, spoke to Moses. The Holy Spirit inspired him, revealed, gave him a revelation of what happened at the, at the beginning. And um, yes, I think that's, that's, that's the clearest answer I think we can, we right. can give for this. I think you're right on track. I'm going to ask Shana if you'd read to us uh, Moses' confession himself in Deuteronomy 18, verses 15 through 18. And then I'm going to have, um, I'm going to ask if we can read Jeremiah and David's testimonies because I think Addison is right on track that the Holy Spirit is revealing truth to someone who wasn't there when it happened. Mm -hmm but it's reliable because it's given by inspiration of God. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Shana, could you read for us what Moses himself says in Deuteronomy 18, verses 15 through 18? Sure, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your midst, from your brethren. Him you shall hear according to all you desired of the Lord your God in Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, nor let me see this fire any more, lest I die. And the Lord said to me, What they have spoken is good. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brethren, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. So what did you hear there that was really important? Did you hear it, Samisa, right at the end there? What was it? I will put my words into their mouth. So, so if this prophet who's to come will have the word of God put in his mouth, mm -hmm. Moses' testimony as a prophet, he says a prophet like me, would be? Raised up. That the Lord, 
put, oh, put yeah. his words yes, yes, in his, his mouth. mouth. In my yeah. mouth. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. In my mouth. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's going to continue to do that. Now, can you think of another prophet who gave that testimony? Um, Glenny, can you think of another prophet? I'm thinking of one who said, God, I'm so young. I don't know if I could speak for you. Um, mm -hmm. Does anybody come to mind, Glenny? Yes, there's Jeremiah. Would you read for us his testimony in Jeremiah 1 and verse 9? Sure. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And it says, Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. All right. So that sounds very much like Moses, right? I will, yeah. God will put his words in, in, his. in, in the prophet's mm -hmm. mouth. Um, I'm thinking of the psalmist David, too. Mm -hmm. uh, could someone read for a second Samuel 23 and verse 2? Second Samuel. Samisa, do you have that chapter 23 and verse 2? Sure. How does that read in your Bible? Reading from the New King James Version, it says, The Spirit of the Lord spoke by me, and His word was on my tongue. Mm -hmm. Ah, <laughs> mm -hmm. that has it, the whole Spirit of the Lord. Yes. spoke mm -hmm. through me. His word was on my tongue. Now, as I read scripture, it, it also has, can I say, the personality of the author? Mm -hmm. uh, they write from their own background and, yeah. and history, yeah. and yet the word of God is given through them. Mm -hmm. yes. So we're learning from our study of the Pentateuch now that Moses, we said, not only is writing these words, Mm -hmm. but he's written other words under the inspiration of God. So what else is important in Genesis? You say, Derek, we're well, going to cover Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers mm -hmm. in the next 35 minutes. How do we do that? Well, we have to summarize. So Sabina, help us. What else do you see in the book of Genesis mm -hmm. that's really important okay. besides the fact that God not only is the creator, but he's our creator? Yes. Well, right after creation, I think that a very important information we have is how is it that sin came into the world? Mm -hmm. So about the falling of humans. Um, so, so that would be in Genesis chapter 3. Chapter 3, uh, And of exactly. course, we know that humankind is created with free will, yep. mm -hmm. right? And, yes. and so there's an explanation of how that happened. Brittany? And right after the fall, there's the first gospel promise that God will send a deliverer through mm. the seed wow. of, of a woman. And it just gives hope that even though sin entered the world, God had a plan. Mm. So, so you've got the first uh, word of hope mm -hmm. that comes for a fallen, a fallen family. Mm -hmm. And of course, that sin passed down from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. uh, Harold, you've read the book of Genesis. Yep. What else do you see? We could, by the way, spend an hour on sin coming into the world, <laughs> yes. but we know there's a great battle between good and evil. Yeah. What else important do you see in the book of Genesis? Well, we also see how degrading society became, who knows how many, how many years have passed, to the point that God had to destroy with the flood. Mm -hmm. But yet, again, there was a promise made that the earth would not be destroyed with, with water anymore. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's a troubling word. Do you, do you remember that? Uh, maybe one of our remote team members. Do you remember that God saw that the, the thoughts of mm. humans was evil? What did, what did it say? Continually. 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 Yes, Addison, uh, sounds like today. Yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, there's so many parallels. I mean, Jesus looked back on that time and he said, okay, well, you know, remember the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, remember the time of Noah, mm. uh, the antediluvians. Uh, it, it, the world was just a cesspool like it is today. And, and we, need, we need to accept God. Not, you know, the book, of the, uh, the book of Genesis, I see two words when it comes to the theology. One is, we mentioned this already, God is creator. The second word is, he is our savior. Mm. And more than ever before, we need Jesus. Mm -hmm. Well, you brought up some other key events, and then we come to these uh, important family leaders. What do we mm -hmm. call those people, Brittany? The patriarchs. The patriarchs, mm -hmm. and, and the most uh, noted of them would be? Abraham. Abraham, Abraham right? Mm -hmm. And so we've got Abraham, Isaac, Isaac mm -hmm. Jacob, Jacob, and the book of Genesis kind of ends with? 
Close. Joseph, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. he's yeah. kind of the okay. key yes. one of the 12 sons. Yeah. Yeah. Sabina, do you want to add something to I that? Was just saying, yeah, and then, then that leads into Exodus. And then that's going to take us to the next book. So before we move on, and again, we don't have a lot of time, but these are important uh, themes in the book of Genesis. There's a creator. He's our creator, yeah. which means our life has meaning. Mm -hmm. Our first parents were deceived by Satan, the fallen angel, mm -hmm. but a word of hope, a Savior's coming. Yes. Things go from bad, interesting, the lie was you'd be like God, but actually things go from bad to worse, worse. to worse, worse yeah. until there's a flood. God saves a remnant, mm -hmm. and from that remnant come the patriarchs and the promise to them of the mm -hmm. seed that will come, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. How would you summarize, help me out someone, uh, maybe one of our remote team members or someone here in the studio, maybe you're watching, you could send us an email. We'd like to hear. Summarize the book of Genesis for us, the first book of the Pentateuch, in one sentence. Who'd like to give it a try? Yes, Brittany. Simply put, I would say, the beginning of the promises of God. The beginning of the promises of God. All right? That's not a complete sentence, but I, I know what you're saying. Maybe we need to add a little bit more to that, uh, Stephanie? Yeah, this may not be a complete sentence <laughs> okay. either, but it's the options, the choices, and the consequences. The option, so you're, you're creating an in-depth interactive outline <laughs> so you can do a Bible study on the book of Genesis. Samiso? Mm -hmm. I'd say God restores. God restores, that's a, a later part. Uh, Addison? Uh, redemption. God redeems. God redeems you. Just give me fragments. Give me the book of Genesis in one sentence. Yes, Sabina. For me, it says it speaks to the origins. Okay. The origins of the universe and universal origin, but also then in a more personal and local level, the orig origin of God's people and the promise they would usher it into Jesus. Um, it sounds like we're struggling to get it all in one <laughs> sentence. Addison, I saw you waving, but I'm going to go to Shana because I know Shana's been a teacher. Shana, could you give me the book of Genesis in one sentence? Yeah, so I'll say that it is the ultimate display of a God who loves us very much, who saw us fall, but always put in place redemption and, and ways to save us, even though we mess up. It's a very long sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for giving it a try. Addison, I saw you waving. Well, Stephanie mentioned earlier, uh, you know, about the origins, and I thought of the word anthropology. Again, that's just a, a fragment, though, of the book of Genesis, so I'll, I'll pause there. <laughs> All right. Well, can we, can we put it really simply? God created the world perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But through deception, sin came into the world, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and yet God gave a promise of deliverance. Yeah. 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 Now you say, Derry, that's not too good. <laughs> Please send your email to sshope at hopetv.org. The book yeah. of Genesis in one sentence, because we have to move on to the book of Exodus. Mm -hmm. So, and as someone pointed out, uh, Joseph, I think Sabina you mentioned, mm -hmm. takes us right into Exodus. Mm -hmm. But Sabina, if you could read Exodus 1 and verse 8, because uh, having been a favored Mm, yeah, they were always strangers. Mm -hmm. They lived in the land of Goshen. Uh, they were shepherds, which was not looked upon in a positive way by the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. But they were certainly favored because of Joseph. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you read in Ex Exodus now, the second book of the Pentateuch, mm -hmm. also written by Moses mm -hmm. under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit in mm -hmm. chapter 1, verse 8? Okay, so I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And it says... Now there arose a new king over Egypt who did not know Joseph. Now you could say, okay, so then he got to know Joseph and he was very kind to his descendants. But what actually happened, Stephanie? Slavery. Mm -hmm. Slavery to the Egyptian or to the Israelites. Why mm -hmm. did the Egyptians enslave the children of Israel, the descendants of, of Joseph, really, or Jacob? And mm -hmm. why? Brittany? So they were multiplying more and more, and then the Egyptians thought the, they're becoming so great that if they join with any of the enemies of us around us and come against us, we'll be overcome. So in order to protect themselves, they made them slaves. Mm. Um, I don't think they had to do that, but they no. thought they needed yeah. to do that, right? Yes. And, and, and actually, the, the oppression becomes, from the book of Exodus, it becomes what? Worse. worse it worse. becomes more and more severe, yes. and yeah. the people 
the children of Israel are crying out. Mm -hmm. And the book of Exodus, well, one of the key parts of it is that God will provide deliverance, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Exodus mm -hmm. means... Exit. Exit, exit. right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exit from... Slavery. Bondage, Slavery. Yeah. Bondage yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to pick up... Samisa, could you read chapter 3, verses 1 through 8? How is the Lord going to provide that deliverance, which was even promised... Uh, in the book of Genesis, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Exodus 3, verse 1 to 8, reading from the New King James Version. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Herob, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. Mm. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, here I am. Then he said, do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet for the place where you stand is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely sinned the oppression of my people who are in Egypt, and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. So I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from the land to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to a place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hevites and the Jebusites. Again, I'm thinking while you're reading, very specific, right? Mm -hmm. There is a land and there's a reason that those uh, are going to be judged that are occupying mm -hmm. that land. They've filled up their cup of iniquity, yep. yeah. mm -hmm. those pagan nations. Mm -hmm. But how is God going to provide the exodus or the deliverance? Well, what did you hear? Moses. The man Moses. 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 God's going to use a person, exactly. yeah. right? Mm -hmm. By the way, how old is Moses at the time of this conversation? Does anybody know? 80. 80 years old. Yes. <laughs> Do you know anyone who's 80 years old? Yeah. yeah, if you do, people. it could be a great grand, a grandparent, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But uh, God comes to Moses mm -hmm. and says, I've been preparing you all of your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 40 years, well, not quite 40 because he was at home with his mother first, but three, th three plus decades in the court of Pharaoh mm -hmm. and, and, and 40 years mm -hmm. taking care of sheep. Yep. Yes. I've been preparing you to to bring deliverance mm -hmm. to my people. Mm -hmm. That's really the heart of the book of Exodus, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That God, by the way, did you see some encouraging words in the, in the way the Lord spoke to Moses mm -hmm. there? Mm -hmm. what, what caught your attention, Kulchena? Yes, I think it's important to note in verse eight where God says, I have come down to deliver <laughs> them out of the hand of the Egyptians. And so if, if that doesn't give Moses the motivation that God himself is with you to lead these people out, mm -hmm. then I don't know what else would. Yeah, thank mm -hmm. you. Glenny, uh, something that's encouraging in the words the Lord's speaking here. No, I just wanted to point out um, to something you had mentioned how Moses was 80 years old when God called him to do this, and he had been preparing him all this while. And often there are times when most people are like, Lord, I'm this many years old and well, I'm not doing anything. I'm just taking the trash out of my house. And often we forget that God is preparing us through these long processes for that one moment. Mm. And uh, in the process of ignoring all of the preparation time, we might even miss out on what God has been uh, wanting us to do. Beautiful insight. You know, while Glennie was sharing that, I thought of Simon of Cyrene. I don't know how old he was, but it does mention his sons, Alexander and Rufus. So I don't know how old he was, but, but God had prepared 
for him to carry the cross of the Savior. So, Glennie, thanks for sharing that. Just being available when God says, I've got a special work for you to do. Sabina? Yeah, and kind of going along of what she was sharing and also your question, what is encouraging here to us? I think in verse 7 when it says that God has heard their cry, mm -hmm. uh, it, no matter what, as long as time goes by, you may not believe that God is listening to your cry and your needs. And here, that's very encouraging even to us right now that God, He hears, He sees. Mm -hmm. It may take 40 years, 10 years, mm -hmm. 11, 100, but 400 still, years, you know, generations. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing yeah. that because they had been praying for generations, hadn't mm -hmm. they? Exactly. That, that, that they would experience freedom. Stephanie? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking from a leadership perspective that Moses had a personal encounter and this was not just a casual experience. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, a burning bush and there was a lot of encouragement just in the whole delivery of that message that I'm calling you. You know, it caught me. my attention about the holy ground. Mm -hmm. This is just ground out in the desert. Yeah. What was it that made it holy ground? Mm -hmm. Anybody? God's presence. presence. Yeah. God's presence. Yeah. So that would mean if we invite God's presence to be with us on Hope Sabbath School today, this is also holy ground. Mm -hmm. As we're reflecting on the message that the Holy Spirit yeah. gave mm -hmm. to this great prophet Moses, right? And mm -hmm. probably it yeah. was during the 40 years taking care of sheep that he had time to write the book of Genesis under the inspiration, and some think he may have written the book of Job during that time also, mm -hmm. but the Exodus has got to happen right, kind of live, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it's happening while the events are taking place. Mm -hmm. Sabina? Yeah, and also um, concerning the, this preparation, think that God, he both had to Moses the role of bringing these people to deliverance and have to interact with um, you know, the Pharaoh and all the court. But at the same time, there would be a time, and we know as we continue reading the Bible, where Moses would have to spend a lot of time in a desert, in the mm. wilderness, and had to understand things that pertain to, to that type of land. Mm. So I see here also God foreseeing what was happening and preparing Moses during these 40 years, also for the mission of deliverance of the, his sure. people. He would need him to be prepared to that kind of environment. Mm. So I want to ask a question. Maybe one of our remote team members could answer. God doesn't just want to deliver them from bondage. He does want to do that. But he has a special purpose for them, which they're unable to fulfill mm -hmm. in, in a place of bondage where they're not even free to worship, right? Mm -hmm. Let alone witness uh, in the way they would like to. What is the special purpose? Got a team member out there that would like to answer that. Yes, yeah, Shana, God's got his purpose for us. It's actually, I think, alluded to in Exodus 19, verses 4 through 8. But you can, if you'd like to read that for us and then reflect on it, Exodus 19, 4 to 8. And, and maybe that's important for us to know, too. What do you think, mm -hmm. Stephanie? It's not just about me being saved. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's about the mission to do something, right? Mm -hmm. Shana, would you read that for us in Exodus 19, 4 through 8? Yes, I'll be reading from the New King James Version. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. So Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid down before them all these words which the Lord commanded them. Then all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. So Moses brought back the words of the people to the Lord. Do those words remind you at all of, um, we won't go and read, read them, but it just came to my mind, of words spoken to followers of Jesus mm -hmm. in the early Christian church. You're nodding, Harold, which is? Peter. Right, yeah. that you're a chosen, chosen genera generation, generation a holy. royal Priesthood, a holy nation. Yeah, that you may, what, declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness, out of darkness into? So we've got a mission, right? So the book of Exodus is not just about deliverance, but about mission. But just brief summary, what else happens in the book of Exodus? What's uh, 
good news and bad news. There's some important revelation. Exodus 25, verse 8, let them make me a sanctuary. Okay, so the whole sanctuary. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the sanctuary about, Brittany? The plan of mm -hmm. salvation. It's the plan of salvation. Mm -hmm. He wants mm -hmm. them to understand he's not only their creator, mm -hmm. but he is their redeemer, redeemer Recre or recreator and yeah. redeemer, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But then there's some sad news in the book of Exodus too. Mm -hmm. What's the most tragic event in the book of Exodus? The golden calf. The golden calf, that's, that's right. Exodus chapter 32, yep. verses 1 through 6. I know our time's going quickly, <laughs> but, but, but why is this recorded? Why don't we just say, could we just leave that out? I mean, it's actually disgraceful behavior, mm -hmm. uh, but there's a lesson for us here in, in this part of the Pentateuch. Could you read for us verses 1 through 6 of Exodus 32? Yes, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And it reads, now, when the people saw that Moses delayed coming down from the mountain, the people gathered together to Aaron and said to him, Come, make us gods that shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. And Aaron said to them, Break off the golden earrings, which are in the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters and bring them to me. So all the people broke off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he received the gold from their hand and he fashioned it with an engraving tool and made a molded calf. Then they said, this is your God, O Israel, mm. that brought you out of the land of Egypt. So when Aaron <clears throat> saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. Then they rose early on the next day, offered burnt offerings, and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Mm. 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 By the way, you're saying, Derek, you forgot something else in Exodus, uh, Mount Sinai, Ten Commandments. There's a lot in the book of Exodus, but uh, summarize it in one sentence. Oh, we're going to try that again. Uh, God... Delivers. delivers. He provides. He guides. He, okay, he guides. God delivers, provides, guides. A wayward people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A wayward people. Yes. Mm -hmm. Move on to uh, Leviticus. Uh, Addison, could you read Leviticus 1 and verse 1? Um, there was some additional information. What, what information was given on the mountain? Well, it was instructions to build the sanctuary. What was given Ten, on the mountain? Ten Commandments. The Ten, Ten Commandments, Commandments, right? Yeah. But there was more. We don't know all of the details, but mm -hmm. but some things were given at the at the door of the tent of meeting, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Read for us, Addison, if you would, Leviticus one and verse one. <clears throat> and I'm reading from the King James Version. And the Lord called unto Moses, and spake unto him out of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying. All right, and what does he go on to say? What's the book of Leviticus all about? The sacrifices. Sacrifices. Laws. Civil laws, religious laws. Yes. Lifestyle. Lifestyle. Um, health. Instruction. Health. <coughs> some living. Like Practical, wholesome living. Yes. Some people yeah. read the book, say, I'm going to read through the Bible. They read Genesis, well, that's good, lots of stories. Exodus, well, oh, deliverance. And mm -hmm. they get to Leviticus and they're like, oh. <laughs> Um, and, and part of the challenge is, I think, they feel overwhelmed. Like, are we supposed to be mm -hmm. holy in order to, for God to love us and care mm -hmm. about us? What, what is the message of the book of Leviticus mm -hmm. with all of these guidelines? Mm -hmm. We've learned he's our creator and our redeemer, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? What's the message of Leviticus, Sabina? For me, Pastor Derek, it's a message of how God cares so much for us mm -hmm. and for his people. That he wanted to preserve them, mm -hmm. that he wanted them to flourish in that space. There was a space wild, you know, in the wilderness, they would encounter difficulties that would affect their life also, um, including, as you were saying, lifestyle and their health. So I see God caring for their walk with him. So that's why he instructs them the sacrificial worship rites. I see God caring for their health, and that's how he provides these rituals 
to cure for impurities and healing. And also I see him caring for their social living, their relationships. And for me, this speaks volumes to how God loves us, actually. Mm. And, and so it is the religious <clears throat> guidelines regarding this amazing sanctuary, the plan of salvation, and there's a lot in Leviticus about that, but it's also about day-to-day -day life. Yeah. Yes. What do you yeah. do if an infection breaks out in the camp? Mm -hmm. um, if you're not going to follow the Eden diet and choose to eat animals, which animals are clean and which are unclean? I mean, mm -hmm. there's practical things about how to live, right? Mm -hmm. So if we were to summarize, I've got to, Addison's got a comment here, and then I need someone to summarize Leviticus in one sentence. You say, I'm getting ready. All right, mm -hmm. Addison? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, well, it's just a practical book. There's so many practical steps towards godliness, I can say. Uh, not just having a form of godliness and denying the power thereof, but actually being connected, uh, in our case, of course, today to the living Christ. And for them, of course, they're looking ahead to the cross. But um, again, I'm going to answer your question. Uh, one word, I think prosperity. Oh, uh, I think that so our health either. would prosper. Okay, how to prosper. I think Sabina actually gave us a great yeah. summary when you were just talking a little earlier yeah. that God cares about Everything. All Everything. aspects of life. Every aspect of our yeah. lives, yes. he loves right? He he, because He loves us. Mm -hmm. I, I vote for that one. Yes. God cares about every aspect of our lives because He loves us. Mm -hmm. Let's go on to numbers. Mm -hmm. You say, wow, God's speaking to the prophet and giving much revelation. And then at the very end of His life, these words, mm -hmm. Deuteronomy, which we'll be studying in this entire series. But Numbers chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Glennie, would you read that for us? Numbers 1, verses 1 and 2. And, and I have a question, and that is, what was the purpose of numbering and organizing the children of Israel? Thanks for reading, Glennie. Okay, Numbers chapter 1, verse 1 and 2 says this. Now the Lord spoke to Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, in the tabernacle of meeting on the first day of the second month, in the second year after they had come out of the land of Egypt, saying, Take a census of all the congregation of the children of Israel, by their families, by their fa father's houses, according to the number of names, every male individually. So that's where we get the name for the book, Numbers. Now, you may remember later, a king wants to do a census and it's not the will of God because yeah. they're trusting in human strength. How many soldiers do we have? But here they're actually asked to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's look in chapter 2. Mm -hmm. Shana, could you read chapter 2 of Numbers, verses 1 and 2? Yes, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, Every one of the children of Israel shall camp by his own standard, beside the emblems of his father's house, they shall camp some distance from the tabernacle of meeting. So what would you say the function, this is a God-directed numbering, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They've been led out of, of Egypt. They had no societal structure among themselves there in Egypt. They were all slaves. Whatever they were told to do, they had to do. What's the purpose here of the numbering? Anybody? Samisa? I think it was to organize them and to uh, provide some structure. You have, uh, some scholars believe, over a million people through the wilderness. Mm -hmm. How do you govern? How do you communicate? Mm -hmm. So breaking them out into different groups so that communication can be easier. Mm -hmm. And then previous uh, book, we're looking at the public health issues. So it was just very a logical way to group people in a structured mm -hmm. manner. It would be interesting if we had a drone, we could have taken yeah. it up, right? <laughs> and look, because certain tribes were to the north and to the east and the south and the west and organized by clans, it was quite structured, wasn't it? Yeah. Now, I wish we could take a lot more time on why that was important, but there were some other key events in the book of Numbers that we ought not to miss, not just that they should be organized. What's, what's the most startling information there in the book of Numbers that we, we shouldn't miss? Brittany? I think it's that God brought them to the border of the Promised Land, but they refused to enter. Mm -hmm. Numbers chapter 14, yeah. you know, yeah. the spies come back, 10 of, had they sent out how many spies? 12. 12, wow. 10 came back, said terrible. Joshua and Caleb. Caleb says, good, God's giving us the land, but they turn back. So that's one key event. Yeah. But there's some other stories, uh, tragic stories yeah. in the book of Numbers, even though they're so close. 
A chorus rebellion. The rebellion against Moses yes. is there, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's that other mm -hmm. one where they say, God, leave us alone. We wish you weren't with us. And mm -hmm. what happens in the camp? Do you remember that one in fire, Numbers 21? Fiery serpents. Serpent. The fiery serpents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, it's an interesting story. Some people say, by God, you know, sending fiery snakes. Do you know in Deuteronomy, it says the fiery serpents were there all along. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now they say, God, we don't want your protection. Leave us alone. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, well. They, they did not appreciate, earlier someone said that God provided for them guidance. He also yes. provided protection, right? Yes, absolutely. So through the book of Numbers, we find again God showing love and providing, wanting them to be organized, like you said, Sumiso, and yet this rebellious spirit. I need it in one sentence. Uh, are you ready, Harold, yeah. to try the book of Numbers in yeah. one sentence? Well, uh, rebellion can actually delay the fulfillment of God's promises. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. The book of Numbers. Even though God desires our good, yeah. organizing, yeah. rebellion can delay, delay the fulfillment of God's promises. Wow. Anybody want to vote for that one? Yeah. Harold, I think That's you got an A. <laughs> Someone else will send us an email on the book of Numbers. Well, we've been through four-fifths of the Pentateuch, not by size, but by books, right? Genesis, Exodus, Exodus, Exodus Leviticus, Leviticus, Leviticus Numbers. Numbers. So my question for us now is, why do we need a fifth book? Well, you say because it's the Pentateuch, right? But that's not a good reason, right? Why do we need a fifth book when so much revelation chain has been given by the Holy Spirit? Why do we need a fifth book? Well, if we observe the behaviors of the children of Israel by the end of Numbers, it seemed that they forgot who led them out of Egypt and who was with them through it all. And so mm -hmm. um, we need this fifth book for sort of a reminder mm -hmm. to them of the law and, and of the fact that God wanted to make them a peculiar people. And so these are the standards by which I'll make you different from all the nations around you. So, so it was necessary. Deuteronomy is a necessary reminder to them because mm -hmm. it seemed that they'd forgot by the end of Numbers. Mm. So I'm going to make it very practical. In the last few minutes we have, can you think of a time in your life when God needed to remind you, maybe through a prophet or through a friend, of a truth that you knew, but you just needed to be reminded of that truth? It maybe was in a challenging time in your life, uh, a difficult situation, a turning point. You just needed to be reminded. This is a new truth, right? You needed to be reminded. Samisa, I see you nodding your head. Can you think of a time? Yeah, so re recently, uh, almost a year ago, I just started a new job and it was really challenging. Um, I, I didn't have any training and I just walked in and I was pretty much in charge of everything related to uh, accountant and I was just lost and my wife was very encouraging she just told me that look at how God has led you in the past mm. Mm -hmm. and that was just very encouraging she uh, showed me different accounts specific example of the mm -hmm. way the Lord has led me and it gave me a lot of peace and comfort. You have a good wife. I should. By the way, he says he wasn't prepared. You have a master's degree and you have lots of experience, but this was a big challenge. It's like a new Moses assignment, yes. right? Yeah. Uh, so you needed to be reminded. Someone else, a time we just needed to be reminded um, of a truth that, that you knew. Yes, Harold. Well, God's amazing forgiveness. Like many times I fall in the same type of sins or in the past, like I thought that like, God would never forgive me, but it, like going through church and hearing the same message and then like, I don't know, one speaker, it just hit, it, it just hit my heart like, wow, God is a merciful God. Mm -hmm. And I just laid out my sins before him openly because I was too afraid to, afraid to confess even though God already knew. <laughs> it's like, what, what am I doing? I'm not hiding anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I just felt this weight. It's like, oh yeah, I, I just took the promise to heart. Even though it took many mm -hmm. people and the reading the Bible, but that day just struck Beautiful. me. Beautiful. You needed that reminder, guided by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I was in church three weeks ago, maybe four, a little church, and a man was almost in tears. He said, I heard a message last night and I saw God's love for me like never before. Mm -hmm. And people were looking like, you know, he'd heard it, but he needed to be reminded, reminded again. Mm -hmm. Sabina? Pastor Derek, I'm reminding here from the time that I had to quit my job that I was having at the time in Maryland, and I had made the decision of going to the seminary. And at the time, I knew deep down in my heart that God had spoken to me many times already, had uh, 
called me into ministry to serve him further. But obviously, you know, it is a time of change when you need to quit a, when you need to quit a job and go back to education. I had already gotten a master's and it's not something that was easy to me just to jump into this new uh, challenge of going in, into the seminary. And, and by remember, the way, for people who may not know seminary, you were studying theology. Theology, exactly. Right. Studying theology, right. exactly, to, to serve God better. Right. And I remember uh, I had to, to, to get a ride with a person I'm trying to remember. It was a person I didn't knew. And I just shared with this person a little bit of what was going on in my life. And she turns to me and she, she looked into my eyes and said, you know what, God has got you. And I know it sounds like a simple word, but it connected me with a song that I used to sing before even coming to Washington DC where I had my job and connected me with an experience in which I had a certainty that God really had gotten me mm -hmm. for whatever my needs would be. Mm -hmm. So the one phrase that this lady spoke to me reminded me of God's promise that he mm -hmm. had gotten me, and that I could just continue the journey he would be with me. And even now, as I transition now again back to uh, away from the seminary, as I'm finishing this course, I know that God is, has got me and that he has something mm -hmm. in store and that makes mm -hmm. me so happy. That is just kind of a colloquial phrase in English, God yeah. has, has got, got me. me. But I th the Bible text I thought of was, my sheep hear my voice. Yeah. yeah. No one can snatch them out of my hand. my hand. And my Father is greater than all. Mm -hmm. And no one can snatch them out of my Father's hands. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we need that reminder. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're watching, we're on part one of this series, Present Truth from Deuteronomy. And you're saying, Derek, I needed a reminder of truth, even from our study today, that we have a creator. He's our redeemer. He cares about every aspect of our lives. That's Leviticus. Uh, he wants us to, to be orderly, it, not chaotic. And, and he'll continue to reach out to us even when we make mistakes that delay the fulfillment of his promise. Oh, don't we have a great and awesome God? We're going to study how good he is in this series. But right now, I want to pray with you. Father in heaven, thank you for present truth revealed through the Pentateuch. And now as we continue studying Deuteronomy in this series, lead us into a deeper appreciation for you as our creator and redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, thanks for joining us for Hope Sabbath School. You say, Derek, this is going to be an amazing journey. You're right, present truth in Deuteronomy. Guidance by the Holy Spirit for our lives today. Friend, tell people they can find guidance in the Lord too.